Hey guys, the Explorer of Four here, the Horror Boy. Welcome to my next franchise that I'll be reviewing this October. And uh, I'll be honest with you guys, this is a franchise that uh, I was debating whether or not to do the reviews for. Because as I'm filming this, it is now October 20th, and I haven't got even to the first Halloween yet. Uh, just got done reviewing the Friday the 13th film, took a lot of uh, time and energy to do those reviews, and I was like, eh, should I do the Halloween reviews right now, or should I push it back till next year? And I was like, well, I think I can get these movies out. At least, at the very least, I might get my last review out by like November 3rd or something like that. So these reviews might cut into November just a little bit, but... Um, you know, I still have at least a decent amount of time to at least record some of these reviews. Uh, as far as uploading goes, we'll see how that goes. But as far as recording these reviews goes, uh, I'm pretty sure I can get at least one review reviewed a day or filmed a day. And, I mean, for me, every October involves this franchise. Either one movie, two movies, three movies, hell, some people will even tough it out and watch the entire goddamn series. And uh, I won't lie, I've done that before, it's a lot of fun. I don't know if I'm going to do that this year. I'm definitely going to check out the ones that I really like. And might give a couple of the bad ones a rewatch. Hell, why not? Just to see how they are, you know. Um, and this is a franchise I've covered a lot, and that is, of course, the Halloween franchise. Like I said, uh, there's always a preferred one to watch during October. Like, there are people's favorites to watch. You know, some love the first movie during October. Some love to watch Halloween 2. Some love Halloween 4. Some love Halloween 6. Some, luckily, love to watch Halloween 3 around this time. Which I definitely do. Halloween 3, I think, fits. And Halloween 2 especially. People say there's no... I know that this is a, has problems with it, which will get to one of the main problems that people say doesn't have a very good October feel. I thought it did. I thought just the way that it was shot, the way that it was lit, uh, was like an October film. So I I really like to watch this around October as well. But man, the best one to watch is probably the original. Now, this is my favorite of the series. Halloween 2, even though it's like, it, it's like a hair below, like a hair, I'm not, I don't even know, man. I'm just, I love both, let's just say this, I love both of these movies kind of equally. I think you watch Halloween 1, Halloween 2 on a cool October night, you turn the lights down, you get some popcorn, get some friends, get your stereo, get your Blu-rays, high def, you can even get the Halloween 2 Scream Factory and the new Halloween Blu-ray if you want, these are old, but get your Blu-rays, high definition, crank up the stereo, Make sure the volume's good, and sit down and watch both of these. These are just fantastic watches back-to-back. -back. So, yeah, even though Halloween 2 used to be my favorite, I would say the first one, I would lean more towards, but Halloween 2 is a f perfect slasher film. I think is one of the best horror sequels ever fucking made. Like, I think Halloween 2 is easily... One of my favorite films to watch. Easily. Love Halloween too. But that review, I'll review that uh, later. But, like I said, this is a old Blu-ray. I think this is from 2007. Anchor Bay release. Stars release of Halloween from 1978. Of course, this film was directed by John Carpenter. John Carpenter. I mean, what more can I say about John Carpenter, man? I mean, even if people only seen Halloween, maybe the thing... People still love John Carpenter. You know, I don't think anybody hates John Carpenter. If you don't like John Carpenter, then, you know, feel free to let me know in the comments below why you don't like John Carpenter. But I'm pretty sure it's safe to say that pretty much everybody at least likes John Carpenter. But I love John Carpenter. I think his films are all unique. They all look unique. They all sound unique. Like, this, to me, doesn't feel like Big Trouble in Little China. You know, they're different movies. Or In the Mouth of Madness. They're both different films. John Carpenter really does have a creative mind. And really can do some spectacular things with film. Both with or without a big budget. And this was without a big budget. This was only, I think... What, how much was this movie? Like, maybe 100000 Maybe 300000 
I want to see how much this movie. Yeah, it was about three hundred and twenty-five thousand, and it made forty-seven million dollars. So it was a huge hit back then. That was a that was a massive fucking hit for back then. And I mean, this review probably won't be that long because. A-list reviewers since the 70s to now. 40 years of praise and 40 years of it being called a legendary film. You know, there are just some horror films that I think break the mold. Jaws, The Exorcist, The Omen, Friday the 13th. You know, those really big deal horror films. Poltergeist. You know, in my opinion, I would say Exorcist 3, but... That's not really a film that people talk about all the time, but I love Exorcist 3. But there are just those certain movies that come out, Nightmare on Elm Street, Hellraiser, you know, these these big movies that leave an impact and that I think really embody not only the, the time period, but also embody what was scary back then, you know, what was going on, and, and I think really are just timeless movies. I mean, those movies I just mentioned are timeless. They really do not age. Halloween, even though it has some 70s stuff, I don't think it ages to me. I think it looks beautiful. And for those wondering why I have this old Blu-ray and haven't traded it in yet, because I have no problem with it. It has a commentary with John Carpenter and Jamie Lee Curtis and Deborah Hill. It has uh, film facts, has a featurette, a cut above the rest, trailers, TV spots, radio spots. Um... The film looks... It, look, I've seen Halloween on every single media except for Laserdisc and, and Betamax tapes or whatever. I've seen Halloween on VHS. I've seen Halloween on DVD. And I've seen Halloween on Blu-ray. Dude, this tagline right here, beyond high definition, you know, the ultimate high definition experience, dude, that really fits this. Even, I would even say this too, Halloween 2 and 3 the same way. Like, if you've seen these movies, although I do love Halloween 3 and 2 on VHS a lot, these movies look beautiful on Blu-ray. All of these companies did a great job. You know, all of them. Scream Factory, this one I think was Universal. And of course, Anchor Bay, Stars. This film, the first movie, looks beautiful on Blu-ray. It's widescreen. It's clear, no film grain, no static, nothing. It looks beautiful. It literally looks like it was a modern day film because of the way that it's shot, because of the long shots, the, you know, the POV shots. Beautiful, beautiful. This also has a updated stereo sound system, which I thought really added some cool stuff. The mono is cool. The mono is really cool. But the stereo version, I believe it's the stereo, surround sound version, Dolby surround sound 5.1, this sounds great. They added in some sound effects, some better, let's say, lightning or some better, you know, sound effects. They redid some sound effects I thought really sounded good. They redid the soundtrack with the remastered version, which sounded great. I mean, everything sounded beautiful, clear, remastered, redone, but to a fantastic point some may not like it some may want the mono it has the mono so if you want to watch the mono you can but man what what a great remaster of the sound but yeah this is the Halloween blu-ray from anchor bay it's an old one i'm pretty sure they've released a lot better ones since then but hey i, I don't mind this cut i think this is like one of my favorite versions to watch because this is i have no problems with it but yeah, man, I mean, we haven't gotten to the story yet. It's like almost 10 minutes in. But I mean, the story is very basic. I mean, of course, the classic opening of Michael Myers, the POV shot going up to the house, going through. It's very well lit. You don't know what's going to happen. I remember as a kid, when I seen this movie, I'm like, okay, what's going on here? What's happening? Goes up the stairs, stabs the sister. You get a little bit of nudity in there. Walks down the stairs. I think it's just done brilliantly. Because it's shot very, very well with the mask, the mask POV too. I really enjoy that. And I don't give a fuck. People say, well, Michael Myers must be six foot seven. He's all like, the, he's a little kid, but somehow the POV is way up here. I don't care. It's, it is what it is. I didn't even notice it until people said that. I'm like, well, great. Now I always see it. But 
it is what it is. I, it's not a problem for me. I didn't even notice it. It's whatever. But yeah, walking out and Michael taking the mask off. You realize the little kid, the butcher's knife. And it's years later. Uh, you've got Donald Pleasance, brilliant actor. My favorite depiction of Dr. Loomis. Donald Pleasance is an actor who I've seen in plenty of movies. Plenty of movies. This is the point to where when I'm seeing Donald Pleasance in school movies... Now, you guys know how watching school movies go. You get the occasional one that you like, but most time the school movies, the ones you watch in school, you know, they're kind of chores to sit through. Not the ones I was shown, because they were like historical movies, and Donald Pleasant was in them. I'm like, wow, Donald Pleasant is even in my school movies I'm watching here, for school or whatever. So that was cool. Donald Pleasant is just one of those actors I think is brilliant. Brilliant. And him as Dr. Loomis... I know Rob Zombie isn't a fan of this Loomis, but I don't understand that. He tries to say that it's a crazy Loomis, some guy, pretty much saying how Loomis is just some crazy guy who pops up occasionally. I thought, I had to disagree with that. I thought he did fantastic. And the Loomis character has some great dialogue, has some great scenes. He really knows, him and Jamie Lee Curtis really uh, fill the scenes, as well as Nick Castle. They all really do fill their scenes very well. You also got Nancy Keys as Annie, PJ Souls as Linda. PJ Souls was going to be in, uh, I know she was in that movie Stripes, and she's been in a lot of other uh, John Carpenter movies as well. She's been in a lot of recent movies too. I think she was in Devil's Rejects, if I'm not mistaken. But you got her, you know, Kyle Richards, Brian Andrews, Nick Castle, who is my favorite uh, Michael Myers of all time. And even the rest of the cast, little characters here and there, Charles Cyphers, you know, great character, great actor. I mean, all the cast does very well in this movie. Um, and pretty much it's on Halloween, or it's the night before Halloween, and Michael Myers is escaped from this mental institute. You know, Loomis and this girl are driving up, and Michael Myers has, like, freed all the people in the asylum while they're walking up. Pretty much, uh, they see that all these people are, like, loose in the yard. And you had that great scene when, uh, the, the nurse lady, she's from H2O. I think she's going to be in the next movie, too. I'm not, I'm not sure she's going to be in the next movie or if, I don't know if she was on Halloween H2O because she gets killed in Halloween H2O. But in this movie, you had that great scene where she's in the car, Michael Myers attacks her and busts his hand on the window. Great shot, great scene. And Michael Myers, you know, gets his mask, gets his jumpsuit, and begins killing people in Haddonfield. You also get introduced to Jamie Lee Curtis, who is the lead in this movie. Of course, the Scream Queen, the, the daughter of Janet Lee from Psycho. And Jamie Lee Curtis in this movie is amazing. There's just reasons why you cannot tweak this character like Rob Zombie did. And I'm not a fan of that version of Lori because Lori is not like that that's what made Lori different than all of the other girls is that she's not this OMG blah 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 type girl she's very quiet she's very likable she's very down to earth she's very relaxed she's timid and but she's not she's still likable she's still trying to be outgoing you know smoking weed listen to music talking about you know hang out with their friends talk on the phone she's still grounded but in my opinion, when you make her more of the outgoing girl and make her more of this lively personality, to me, it's not. That's not uh, Lori. Lori is not like that. The character is not like that in this movie, and that's not the only character who's like that in this film. That I thought was done, you know, differently in other movies. Some for the better, some for the worse. But as far as Lori goes. This Lori is my favorite out of all of them. H2O's Lori was pretty good. 2018's Lori was alright. But this is probably my favorite version of Lori Strode. And Halloween 2's is pretty good too. But, yeah, so Jamie Lee Curtis is a great job in this movie. Annie, you know, uh, Linda, her best friends. Great job as being the best friends. I know Deborah Hill pretty much, when John Carpenter got this movie script, he was pretty much like, well... I don't know how to write teenager gossip dialogue or whatever. And she's like, well, I'll write it for you. I really do think, I really do think that Deborah Hill really helped this series. Um, and rest in peace to her. She's a fantastic person. Really, really nice person. Really had a lot of passion in these Halloween projects. So Deborah Hill, 
a uh, great, great, wonderful person. But she pretty much said that she would write the dialogue all out for the uh, female characters, kind of so that it felt authentic, you know. And um, as the movie goes on, you got some classic scenes, you know. Bob, come on out, and gets hung up on the freaking wall and stabbed on the wall. You know, the, can I get your ghost, Bob? With the sheet and the glasses, classic. You know, where she gets strangled with the phone cord, classic. Only thing they took was a couple of knives and some ropes. To that. That's a great scene where the, the mask shop got robbed. And the ironic thing is that Dr. Loomis is right here in the frame. And in the background, Michael Myers is driving right past him. And you know what? I never even noticed that before until I watched this again. I'm like, wow, that's a great shot because, like, right there, Loomis could have seen it. But not. Nah, he just... And Michael was driving by. And I thought that the ending, too, is just one of the best third acts ever, man. I mean, of course, the whole film is fantastic, but the third act is just what I think a horror film's third act should be. You know, Michael chasing Lori. Uh, she's finding all the dead bodies. You know, the 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 great shot of Annie on the bed and the headstone of Judith Myers and the pumpkin. Classic, classic, classic. You know, she runs. She backs up. Michael Myers appears in the in the darkness. And stabs her in the shoulder. She falls. You know, that great track, The Shape Stalks. Duh. Duh, duh. Duh. Great, great sound track. Great, great song choice for that scene. You know, she's running down. You know, she gets out of the house, runs across the street, banging on the door. She gets let in. Michael Myers still attacks her. She stabs him right here in the neck with a knitting needle. 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 That's Michael Myers pops up and pretty much uh, she goes she goes in the closet, stabs Michael Myers, he's coming through it. That great scene where she tells the kids to run and Michael Myers sits up in the background like, wow, like great stuff. In the ending, this is like the only movie where you see Michael Myers' face. Except for like Halloween 5, the Rob Zombie movies, and the 2018 movie to a degree. But... In those movies, they're very brief. You never see a full shot of Michael Myers' face, except for like in H2, Rob Zombie's H2. Um, he's pretty much got his mask off in that whole film. But in 2018's movie, you see his face sometimes, you know, maybe through a crack in the door, or maybe a little bit of his face, but you never see a full face shot. In this movie, you see a full face shot. And I don't know why, but I thought it looked creepy. You know, the eye being missing. Just this normal looking person behind the mask. I thought it looked pretty creepy. And of course, that classic scene. Dr. Loomis grabs the gun, shoots Michael Myers six times. He falls off the ledge. Loomis looks down. But before that, he says, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis asks, was that the boogeyman? He's like, as a matter of fact, that was. Looks down, Michael Myers is gone. That great look on his face of... Surprise, but yet he kind of also knew, like, you know, he knew what happened. And then a recap of all the scenes, the music's playing, you hear Michael Myers breathing behind the, ma <clears throat> behind the mask. Uh, the credits start rolling, and the movie, fantastic. Fantastic. And, um, yeah, just, just utterly brilliant, man. Utterly brilliant. This is easily my favorite... It's my favorite of the series because I think it's filmed the best, it looks the best, it sounds the best. The music, the the characters, the direction, the writing, everything is brilliant in this movie. And that's why it's hard to follow this up, even though I think Halloween 2 is on that same level. Just, I would say I watch Halloween 1, I don't even know if I watch it more, I watch them both all the time, but you know... I would say the first movie is my favorite, but the Halloween 2 is right up there with it. Like, it, it's brilliant, brilliant sequel. But, yeah, man, Halloween, I mean, there's not much else I could say about it. I know when it was being made, it was called the Babysitter Killers, or Babysitter Murders, whatever it was called. And they didn't want to title it that. And I know that in the 2018 film, they actually used that title as a Easter egg. It's basically... The title of the murders that happened in the past. They're called the babysitter killings or whatever. And I know that Mustafa Akkad didn't like that title. Or I think that was his title. John Carpenter didn't like that. And no film before had used Halloween. So they pretty much took a risk. Used it. 
and the rest is history. That poster is fantastic. I had a shirt of that poster, but it worn in like five months. So yeah, cheap shirt didn't even last five, six months, whatever. It didn't even last a year and it faded, but that poster is amazing. Great, great poster. Been parodied so much of the years, but I think that poster is timeless. Um, the There's just a lot of stuff in the movie that I thought was really, really, really well done. And it's definitely a classic horror film. But, yeah, the original Halloween, I mean, what else can I say about it? Fantastic masterpiece. If you haven't seen it, if you haven't seen Halloween, yeah, apparently then my camera wants you guys to go watch Halloween so much it turned off. But, yeah. Um, Halloween 1978, utter classic. I mean, what else can I say about it? It's a film that will live on forever, and I think will forever be a classic, awesome horror film. But yeah, anyway, it's my review in the first Halloween, definitely a masterpiece, and pretty soon, I'll be getting to my review of more of the night he came home. The nightmare isn't over, Halloween 2. So yeah, one day, well... Hopefully, at least tomorrow, I can get this uploaded for you guys. But, yeah, this review is coming soon. Anyways, guys, thanks for joining the review. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. The Explorer of Horror is out. See you guys later. Bye.